Hi, this is Lucian Miller from Innovative Designs, and in this video we're going to show you the proper technique for soldering a set of bullet connectors onto a speed controller. Uh, if you're going to be flying electrics, proper soldering technique is a very important skill that you must learn how to do, because if you don't glue, uh, solder your bullet connectors on properly, you can uh, end up with loss of connection, which can lead to uh, actually blowing out a, a motor or speed controller or both. So it's very important that to uh, learn early on how to properly solder. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is I've got a Scorpion Commander 35 amp speed controller here. I've got a set of three and a half millimeter female bullet connectors, my solder, and also my little soldering jig. Now, what this is is just a piece of one by four wood that uh, I had left over from a project. And what I've done is I've drilled a series of holes in it that allow me to plug my bullet connectors down in to hold on to them. For the three and a half millimeter bullets, I've got one hole that the male plug will fit into, and another one that the female hole, or the female plug, will drop right in like that nicely. Um, as you can see, I've used this board quite a bit. It's a little burnt uh, around that hole, but that's only because I've used it a lot. And another little trick I did is I took a couple of number 64 rubber bands and just wrapped them around the ends of it. And what that does is it provides a non-skid. Uh, little like rubber feet on it so it doesn't move around while I'm working on it. So uh, now that you've got all your tools assembled, the other uh, thing that you're going to need is a good quality soldering iron. If you're going to be soldering bullet connectors, you're going to want to have a decent uh, 40 watt soldering iron. This is a Weller little solder station that I picked up. Uh, I think I got this one at Fry's Electronics. Uh, it has an adjustable temperature control on it so you can set the, the, the temperature you want. Uh, on this particular one I usually have it set around 4 for doing bullet connectors which gives me a good heat and uh, that's pretty much it. So now that we've got all everything assembled here we're going to show you uh, the proper techniques for soldering. Okay to begin the process we're going to start with the speed controller. I'm going to set my solder jig off to the side for a second. Um, you always want to pre-tin your wires. Even if they come tinned from the factory, you still want to uh, put a fresh coat of solder on them. And you can just use a pencil or the handle of your X-Acto knife or something to hold the ends of the wires up off the table slightly. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, take my soldering iron. You always want to get in the habit of wiping your soldering iron on the sponge every time you use it to get the oxides off uh, and always put a fresh coat of solder on the tip of the iron before you apply the solder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the back side of the wire here and get the wire hot and apply fresh solder to the, to the wire leads on the speed controller. And the, the idea here is to completely fill all the spaces between the wires with solder so you have a really good connection when you go to solder your bullet connector on. And I'm going to go ahead and do all three of them like that. Now once you get all three done you might think you're done but in a lot of cases you're only halfway done because if you flip the speed controller over even though you flow the solder you'll notice you might have some spots like on this yellow one here where the solder didn't flow all the way up to the top. You want to make sure you have that good solder all the way around that wire. So we're going to reheat this and apply a little bit more solder up there near the top of that one. And same with this red wire here. We're going to put a little more solder up near the top. Now we've got nice solder filling the connector all the way around. Now you want to also make sure that you have enough wire. When you test fit your bullet connector, you want the wire to go in but you still want to have about an eighth of an inch of wire exposed. See? That way you can have a good fillet of solder up at the top end after you've uh, soldered the, the wire so you make sure you have good connection across the whole solder joint. Now that we've got the uh, wires tinned on the speed controller, now we're going to pre-tin the bullet connectors. Now, we're going to go ahead and put the bullet connector in our little jig here. And 
What we're going to want to do, again, we're going to clean the soldering iron off, put a little solder, and touch that to the side of the bullet connector. And then wait a few seconds for the heat to transfer in there. And then what we're doing here is we're, we're applying the solder down to the bottom of the hole. And the idea here is we want to fill this cup up about two-thirds of the way full with solder. Now I also like to run the soldering iron across the top of the hole there to make sure that the whole cup and the top edge of it has a nice coating of solder on it. Now we're up there to the point where it's uh, filled pretty good. There's still a dimple in the solder. And we're going to let that cool off for a few seconds. And I'm going to take a, take a pair of pliers here and just lift that out of the hole and just temporarily set it aside in one of these other holes to cool while I do the next one. And we're going to repeat this process for all three bullet connectors. It's always important when you're soldering that you pre-tin both ends of the solder joint, in this case the wire and the bullet connector. We get a nice coating of solder in that one. And then we'll take that one and set it aside to cool. And we'll get the final one here. You always want to make sure you wait a second until the part's hot enough. You don't want the, to melt the solder on the iron. You want the solder to melt on the bullet connector. That way you know that the bullet connector is hot enough. If you simply put m m melted solder into the bullet connector, it'll pool up in there, but it actually will not stick because it's not hot enough. So once those are all done, and uh, set them aside to cool, and then we'll actually solder them onto the uh, speed controller. Okay, now we've got all three of the bullet connectors uh, properly tinned. We've got the wires tinned on the speed controller. I'm going to take one of my bullet connectors and plug it into my soldering jig there. Uh, I'm going to grab soldering iron, clean it off, put a little solder on the side of it there to make sure we have good contact. And then what we're going to do is take the, uh, the soldering iron, hold it to the side of the bullet connector, and you'll see the heat start to flow across, and the solder will all start to melt and get nice and shiny. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the wire and dip it down into that pool of molten solder. And dip it up and down a couple times to make sure we got good heat transfer. And then I'm going to move the soldering iron up here in the little crack between the wire and the bullet connector. Run it around like that a little bit and then hold it back. Now at this point what we want to do is hold everything perfectly still for about 10 or 15 seconds until that solder uh, solidifies. If you want, you can blow on it a little bit. That'll help cool it a little bit quicker. And once we're done, we've got the solder. Now, if you zoom in on that, you can see how we have a real nice, this is called a solder meniscus. It's a nice little fillet of solder. The solder's nice and shiny. And you can see that as I spin this part, we've got good solder flow coming up the wire all the way around. That's a perfect solder joint right there exactly what you want to see. So now that we got this one complete, we're going to come back and we're going to solder the other two bullet connectors on the same way. And now here you can see the final result after we've soldered uh, the other two bullet connectors on. We've got the wires nice and straight. You can see the solder joints nice and smooth on all three of them. And uh, now uh, the next step is going to be cleaning them off. So uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Next thing that we're going to do is uh, clean off the uh, bullet connectors. Now it's really important after you get done soldering to clean the residual soldering flux off. Um, I'm going to have to get a paper towel here. Uh, alcohol is, works best as a solvent for the flux. This is uh, denatured alcohol. And it's also called shellac thinner. You can get this at uh, any home improvement store, you know, like Home Depot or Lowe's or you know hardware stores, anything like that. It's, it's sold in the paint section next to the paint thinners, and I'm just going to pour a little bit of alcohol into a little epoxy cup here just so I have a small amount to work with. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip each of these bullet connectors down in this alcohol, kind of swirl them around a little bit, and you can, with your fingers, you can kind of rub the uh, flux off. 
and then use a paper towel to dry it. And we're going to go through all three of them like that. This is a very important step because if you leave that soldering flux on the bullet connectors, it sort of acts like a coat of almost like clear nail polish. And you can have uh, situations where you can actually lose connection on your bullet connector if you don't uh, clean them off because that flux acts like an insulator. So we're going to work that out. And then when you're done, just wipe them off with a paper towel and get them all nice and shiny clean like that. So now that, uh, now that our connections are all clean, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the heat shrink on next. Alright, now we've uh, we just finished cleaning the bullet connectors and now the last uh, part of the process is to put the heat shrink on. I've already pre-cut my pieces of heat shrink to, uh, to size. Um, one thing to note here, uh, if you're using larger bullet connectors, a lot of times what you'll want to do is, to, is put a smaller piece of heat shrink down here on the wire to make the wire a little bit bigger. So most of the heat shrinks have what, have a 2 to 1 shrink ratio, so they'll get down half the size. If, if you were putting big 6 millimeter bullet connectors on here and the wire was significantly smaller, the heat shrink won't shrink down enough. So if that's the case, shrink a small piece of heat shrink on the wire itself first and then when you go to put the other piece on it'll it'll fit really nice so what I'm gonna do is just slide these onto the wires and you wanna make sure that they just come just a hair past the end of the uh, bullet connector like that because they are gonna shrink down in length a little tiny bit so I'm gonna go ahead and press um, all of these on there uh, get them on the ends of the wire and get them adjusted to the right length. Uh, there we go. Now I've got all my heat shrink ready to go on. And then I'm just going to grab my heat gun here. It's always best to use a heat gun. I know a lot of people will use a cigarette lighter or something like that. But the proper tool for the job is a heat gun. You want to flip it over and make sure you get it from both sides. And there we're done. You got perfect uh, heat shrink. You want to make sure that it does go up the wire a little bit to provide a little bit of extra strain relief on there. And uh, so there's the proper way to put on bullet connectors. So that wraps up our video on how to solder bullet connectors onto a speed controller. Hopefully you found this uh, information helpful. Uh, be sure to check out our other videos that we have that uh, show how to solder Dean's connectors and how to install bearings and shafts and other things like that on motors uh, at our website at www.innovativedesigns.com. Thanks for watching.